the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the fifth day of this conference when you pray. My dear friends, we cannot know the inner nature of God unless it be revealed in prayer. We cannot know the inner nature of God. It is only prayer that can reveal the inner nature of God through the word Jesus Christ by the power of his spirit. Then we can know the true nature of God. Suffice to say then that the deepest level of communication as far as prayer is concerned is not communication but communion it is wordless wordless it is beyond words and it is beyond speech and it is beyond concepts i'm saying that the issues are very deep so i need to go very slow i'm saying that we cannot know the inner nature of god unless it is revealed to us in prayer through the word jesus christ powered and sponsored by the holy spirit you know most of the times we think that talking 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 in prayer asking 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 is the deepest level of communication and i want you to begin to correct that talking is good but i i want you to understand that the deepest level of communication is not talking but communion it is wordless it is it is beyond words it is beyond speech it is beyond concept look without the discipline of prayer without extended intervals of silence and solitude in our busy lives prayer will remain an unrealized sentiment so i'm i'm, I'm calling on you in this reflection to begin to have what we call quiet time silence you don't talk you are just before god you can be before god anywhere god is everywhere you can be in your room and for the next five minutes you tell yourself me and god you are in the presence of god no talking silence the living waters come to us over the aqueduct of prayer over extended intervals of silence and solitude and as soon as as soon as we begin to make commitments to a, a prayer discipline you realize that our lives begin to change almost immediately because the waters of grace come down on us so the goal and the objective of prayer is to bring us to the awareness of christ is to bring us into the presence of christ is to bring us into an ever deepening experiential awareness that christ is the soul of our soul and to awaken us to this reality and to effect an ongoing transformation of consciousness that is god god who is the ground and the source of our being so prayer is supposed to bring us into the presence of god that is all I've said in that long grammar. Prayer is supposed to bring us into the presence of God. It's supposed to take us into the presence of God. So prayer has but one function. And that function is to bring us to a personal experiential, experiential awareness of our union with God in Christ. That is what prayer is supposed to do. It's supposed to bring us into, into God's presence. It, it's, it's supposed to bring us to the awareness of our union with God in Christ. We are talking about a transformation of consciousness and awakening of the presence of God within us. That is what prayer is supposed to do. Prayer is supposed to awaken God within us. One function. One function. That's the function of prayer. Prayer is supposed to bring us to understand our union with God in Christ. Prayer is supposed to awaken in us the presence of God within us. That's the function of prayer. But you see what we have reduced prayer to now? We have reduced prayer to asking and casting. That's what we have reduced prayer to. Meanwhile, I'm telling you that the, the function of prayer is to bring us to that personal awareness of our union with God in Christ. To, to, to awaken in us the presence of God. So our life 
it's a continuous seeking of God. That is what our life should be. Continuous seeking of God and finding Him by love and sharing that love with other people. So in prayer, you become aware of this function. And this function is achieved where we have the awakening of the presence of God within us. And if God is awakened within us and we can feel the presence of God within us, you don't need to cast, you don't need to ask anything. That is why Psalm 127 verse 2 will say, He pours his gifts on his beloved while they slumber. God's gifts can only be poured on you when you become aware of the union that you have with God in Christ. When you become aware of the presence of God in you. So it is only in deep, silent prayer of the heart. Deep, silent prayer of the heart. Deep, silent... Look, I want you to begin to incorporate this kind of prayer into your, 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 your prayer life. Deep, silent prayer of the heart. You remember Hannah? Hannah was in the temple. Hannah was praying. She was murmuring from afar. You could see her lips moving, but you don't hear what she, 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 she's saying. She was murmuring. She was praying from her heart. And then, and then the, the, the priest would come and the priest would say, Are you drunk, woman? Are you drunk? Hannah would say, No, I'm not drunk. I'm praying. I'm not drunk. I'm praying. The prayer of the heart. It's a powerful prayer. That's what most people don't know. You know, God is the only being, the only supernatural being who is capable of searching our hearts and our minds. So the prayers that you offer in your heart, the devil doesn't hear. The prayers that you offer in your heart, it's only God who hears. The devil doesn't hear. So prayers of the heart are powerful prayers. Prayers of the heart are powerful prayers. Those of you who are Catholic, sometimes when you go to church, you realize that after you are you are done with the beating prayers, they'll tell you in the silence of your heart, pray your prayers. In the silence of your heart, the church is teaching you something. The prayer of the heart, those kind of prayers, the devil doesn't hear them because it is between you and God. When you want to whisper some serious thing to someone, when you want to say something that is supposed to be a secret, you go to the person's ear and you whisper into the person's ear so that nobody will hear. That is what the prayer of the heart is like. So, so we should begin. It's, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not good to be vocal. You can be vocal as far as your prayers is concerned. But for your prayer life to be, to be rich, there is a need for you to begin to practice what we call the prayer of the heart. The prayer of the heart. It's a powerful way of praying. When, when I have serious, very serious things that I don't want any any spirit on this earth to hear except the spirit of god i pray it from my heart the devil doesn't have access to such prayers that's the kind of prayer that hannah prayed and she received a child that's the kind of prayer hannah prayed she prayed from her heart go and read your scriptures she first some she prayed from her heart she was murmuring and the priest came and the priest said ha ah, are you drunk because of the way her lips were moving the way they, the way her lips were moving and hannah said i'm not drunk she was praying from her heart the prayer of the heart so it is only in deep silence so i'm encouraging you it is good to talk it is good to shout it is good to bring out words it's, it's very important but i'm telling you that if you want your prayer life to be balanced you should begin to practice the prayer of the heart in the silence of your heart offer your intentions to god when nobody can hear you just you and god just you and god so, so when you begin to pray this prayer of the heart, what happens is that gradually, day by day, you put on the mind of Christ, whose will more and more becomes your will, whose love more and more becomes your love, by which you are able to love yourself and to love others. So the habitual aliveness to the reality of this deepest Christ is what Paul expresses when he says, I live now no longer. But Christ lives in me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 27. So look, the point I'm making is this. You see, the, the issues are deep. So I'm trying to break it down. The point I'm making is this. When, when you start out with prayer, you may need written prayers of some other people. You may employ the prayers of other people. You may want to shout. You may want to scream. You know. But as soon as you are able, your prayer should become your own simple personal humble heartfelt bereaved of fanciful 
actively constructed language and lofty ideas as soon as you are able your prayer should become your own it should be simple personal humble and heartfelt so you should begin to pray in all simplicity remember the the publican and the thief they were reconciled by a single utterance the thief just said lord remember me in paradise and the publican said i am not even fit to raise up my head or to hit my chest so in your prayers there is no need for high flown words for it is the simple babblings of children that have more often won the heart of our father in heaven you know there are too many books and methods on prayer that tend to make prayer difficult and complicated and, and in recent times prayer has often been made into signs of formless methods with detailed prescriptions and laborious techniques that is fine but i'm saying that with time your prayer should become your own you know there is this story told of a disciple who after several months he went to his master and then he asked his master to give him a technique or a method of prayer and the master asked him what on earth would you need a technique or a method for and he answered the master to attain inner freedom and the master said haha you need to free yourself of that trap called method you know the problem with methods is that they become a crutch instead of freeing you they, cap- they captivate you they hold you as prisoners within their walls you, you need to bust free and begin to pray from your spirit you begin to pray because you see if you are not careful what can happen is that your prayer postures can deceive you so you are kneeling down or you are rolling you begin to look out for the external forms you begin to look at the, the the words and you think that because you are in a prayer posture you are praying it doesn't work like that so you need to begin to acquire the habit of speaking to god as if you were alone with him you need to acquire that habit speak to god from your heart that familiarity you speak to him with confidence and love like you do to most dearest friends you must pray in the spirit of the publican like the beggar at the pool of Siloam, waiting for the stirring of the waters the waters of grace and over time your prayer should become simple yeah as you grow as you mature your prayer should become simple as in the case of two people when two people are in love when two people begin to experience the deepening of their love words become less and silence become more silence become more praying meditatively from your heart meditating on scripture is always fruitful and you must continue to nourish that throughout your spiritual journey and as your prayer life deepens your understanding of scripture also deepens and and the holy spirit will bring itself to you in the words of the scripture you must open the pages of scripture with an attitude of humble prayerfulness so i'm saying in this reflection of course it is prayer we are talking about and i'm trying to break <laughs> a spiritual mystery down so my my language is so high but pardon me I've, I've tried i'm trying to simplify it i'm saying that look as far as this reflection is concerned i know that we want to talk we, 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 we want to we want to vent out we want to talk to god that is fine i want you to understand that when you talk you should also make time to pray from your heart because the prayers of the heart are powerful the devil cannot hear them so pray from your heart and prayer has only one function to bring you to that personal awareness of your union with god to awaken the presence of god within you that is what prayer does that is what prayer does so if we are faithful to our prayer discipline and we endeavor to live it we would realize that god would come closer to us and will begin to experience the living waters for our prayer intentions today we pray from john we pray using john chapter 15 verse 7 as our basis and it says if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you so i encourage you continue to draw up your own prayer list of what you like god to help you achieve this year and begin to pray into your own prayer intentions let us pray god almighty father we pray for healing grant us your healing we pray for strength grant us your strength 
We pray for vision, open our eyes and prepare us for surprises. We pray for transformation, grant us restoration. We pray for messengers and messengers, prepare us for surprises. We pray for our community, our families, grant us unity and love. We pray for acceptance of ourselves and others, Spirit of the living God help us. For making room at our tables, grant us your spirit, O Lord. For truth seeking, grant us the spirit of truth. For support, prepare us for surprises. For your grace and favor, grant unto us abundantly. O Lord, walk beside us, O Holy One. As we question and welcome, walk beside us, O Holy One. As we challenge and invite, walk beside us, O Holy One. As we discover and understand, walk beside us, O Holy One. As we see, as we touch, as we taste, as we smell, and as we listen for the newness that is awaiting us as far as this year is concerned. May we, your holy people, walk forward together side by side and continue to grant us all the graces that we need. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, have a prayerful day. Shalom and God bless you.